Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and I'm moving on from World of Warcraft. You may be thinking of doing the same, so give me a few minutes and I'll show you some good fantasy roleplay games that you should try out. If you've been following this channel for quite a while, then chances are you too have played World of Warcraft. But as we all know, this one game can't go on forever, and at some point, it's time to move on. But like some sort of digital crack cocaine, trying to go cold turkey from Warcraft is painful, and you need something to fill in that RPG-shaped hole. Unless you want to play the fucking abortion that is the current World of Warcraft, because to beat those withdrawal symptoms, you can just go and play Brave with Raid Shadow, Shadow, Shadow Legends. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah. For the normal people that play Warcraft within the vanilla to Pandaria spectrum, you're going to need a high quality, suitable RPG game. And I'm going to show you five in this video. Some of these I've stretched the term RPG a little, but these are all medieval based fantasy games that at least incorporate RPG themes and mechanics. Anyway, enough context, let's get on with it. I'm going to start with one that really any fantasy RPG gamer should have played by now, and that's The Witcher 3. More than just RPG fans love this game, and that's why CD Projekt Red have managed to get everyone to wank themselves stupid over Cyberpunk 2077. What happened next was somewhat unexpected. fair, the amount of jizz aimed at this studio is well deserved, as The Witcher 3 is a really good title. The story is well written and will actually hold your interest as you play it. The dialogue between characters is very good, although some of the voice acting for some of the NPCs can be a little bit cheesy. But the main draw for any video game is how enjoyable it is to actually play. And in The Witcher 3, you get a huge but detailed game world that is a fun place to spend your time. You can go around farming materials, which can later turn into items and potions you using your trade skill. Obviously, there is a main quest storyline to do, but like any RPG, there are countless side quests which you just find just by wandering around the world, or picking them up on a message board in the town square. Completing tasks for people, or taking up monster contracts, is actually something you'll want to do, rather than something you feel you're forced into just to level up quicker. And those monster contracts are a lot of fun, thanks to the combat that combines magic and swordplay, to an equal and actual decent bit of video game action. You should have played The Witcher 3 by now, but just in case you are too wrapped up in World of Warcraft, go play it, it's well worth a go. God of War is on the mighty PlayStation 4, and although it might not be an RPG per se, it is set in a rustic fantasy world and does feature elements normally found in RPG games. That said, it does also feature the hardest man in video games, Kratos. This is a guy who ripped off a guy's head just because he needed a torch once. But unlike the other games, Kratos now has a son. He's called Boy. 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 I told you, boy. Boy. Boy? No place for a boy. Kratos and Boy decide to go off on an adventure, but in between them and the top of the mountain they are trying to get to are many enemies and monsters that would rather they stayed at home that day. But Kratos, being the mad bastard that he is, just decides to go murder almost everyone in his path instead. Set in a Norse-style fantasy land, this God of War game is now far more open-ended than previous entries in the series, so you will return to areas a few times to track down magical items to open up new areas. So as as you're trying to locate the mystical toenail clippings of Odin or the sticky wank sock of Valhalla, you'll also pick up many crafting reagents, which can be used to create new or upgrade existing gear. This upgrade system is not the only RPG style thing in the game. It also features an extensive lore guide on many aspects of the world, but the combat is certainly not RPG style. It's classic Kratos balls to the wall, kill everything in sight, mash those buttons until everybody's dead. Outside of the brutal combat, there are some puzzle sections, a lot of well written story sections and all this wrapped up in some of the most incredible graphics to ever grace the PS4. Unfortunately, YouTube compression really doesn't do this game justice because when you actually play it, it looks fantastic and a game running on hardware from 2013 still looks better than most PC games in 2020. 
The PlayStation 5 is a beast of a machine, and the game many people wanted at launch is Demon's Souls. But well, I'm not going to call it that because it's a stupid name, so I'm going to call it Demon Souls. The other thing I won't actually be doing is playing it on PlayStation 5 because I don't have one. I do, however, have a PS3 and a copy of the original 2010 game, so I'll be covering that instead. You play as Stevie Wonder, who has gone to the house of fellow soul singer James Brown. James has held one of his crack cocaine parties again, and everyone has turned into crack fiends. And your mission is to slay the zombie flunkies and consume their souls. You start the game in James's garden, just fighting the easy monsters. Once you get the hang of all the important blocking and moving mechanics, the game takes you to the main entrance of the brown household as you try to find a way in. As you battle through the house, the mobs get progressively harder and smarter. Once you go up a few floors, the weak mobs will start setting traps to kill you, and the hard mobs will straight up rape the shit out of you if you put one foot wrong. So expect to die, die, and then die some more. Even though this is running on a PS3, I still think the graphics hold up even today. James Brown's house is your typical crackhead medieval style dark castle where a lot of the time you only have your torch to provide light obviously because James Brown is a crackhead and he hasn't paid the electricity bill. The game is rock hard and is even harder now than when it was first released because you can't get the in-game online hints since the server shut down so good luck with that. This is The Elder Scrolls V, and you play as John Skyrim. It's quite an obscure indie title, you probably haven't heard of it, so let me explain. Elder <laughs> Scrolls V is a driving game, with probably some of the most realistic car physics ever programmed into a video game. Never before has a studio attempted a medieval stock car racing sim with this level of realism. It's a racing game that not only appeals to fans of arcade races like Hot Shot Racing, but also the serious driving game fans like Gran Turismo. The Elder Scrolls V is the sequel to Cooking Mama. What the studio has put together here is not only a world-class culinary simulator with a sense of immersion that rivals Cooking with Link, but they have also included a mode where you get to gather the ingredients too. So you'll have to wander the wilderness to farm herbs, humanely gather animal meat, or take part in the bonus cannibal mode. Then take these items back to the kitchen to cook up a herby meaty human treat. This is Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I don't have the best PC rig in the world, so I've had to scale the settings back a little. As you can see here in this city section, things like NPC density and weather effects have had to be set to the lowest to keep the frames per second up, but it doesn't really affect the gameplay at all. Like here in this section which is just NPC dialogue, I've turned the ray tracing off and that keeps the game running at decent speed and maintains a good level of environmental detail. Lucky for me, there's quite a few indoor sections and these run really well. At some point, I managed to hit 120 frames per second, so the fast paced action featured in this game plays out brilliantly. My personal favourite parts are the driving sections. As you can see, it's not just cars you can drive, but motorbikes too. Speeding around Night City like this is a ton of fun and you should definitely give it a go yourself. The fighting sections are good too, but the really fun parts are the mini games. You can find these in the various nightclubs of the city. I enjoyed the dancing ones as they offer something different. Other players might prefer the other activities. I don't know what I'm doing! Ah! Shit! 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 Fuck me! Fuck me! Ah! 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 Shit! What the fuck? I don't want to fucking die! Fuck! Stop screaming! Stop! Either way, Cyberpunk's 2077 has a little something for everyone. Now, I hand this over to Scott so he can give the game its final score.